Hello, darling, wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful observers and appreciators of eSports. It is time to step into match number three of today. For any of you who are unfamiliar with the format of Iron Squid, it is four-person groups, and the top two from each group advance on to the next round. The bottom two are eliminated and will have to qualify for the next Iron Squid. And the format for each group is essentially a mini double elimination tournament. So right now, Violet and Nesty have won their starting rounds. They will play against each other in a best of three. The winner of this will determine the first person to qualify. So, Kalaris, neither player can be eliminated here. However, it's also true that this is a really good match for each player. This is a very yeah. important win for them. Yeah, winning gives you that, you know, stability. It gives you that calm notion. The fact that, yeah, I've qualified. I don't have to go through another best of three against someone who is you know, equally as ridiculously strong in, in these groups, because everyone's just so strong in these groups, it's crazy. But um, uh, at the same time, maybe not a surprise that we have two Koreans in the upper bracket, whilst we have our two foreigners in the lower bracket. I jest, I jest. Uh, <laughs> it sometimes can happen in StarCraft 2. Uh, but we'll be jumping on in a second between Viola and Nest T. Oh... This is this is going to be this is going to be a bit hard for Nesty, I would say. Violet has been showing phenomenal yes. ZBZ recently. Phenomenal. I would abs I would absolutely give the favor to to Violet. Violet has yeah. had to play in more high profile ZBZ matches. He's had to train for it more. Nesty is an excellent player when it comes to preparing for a single best of X as is the style in GSL. But I would say Violet is much more so the player who's more comfortable in a show up and you have to play whomever. And as a result, Violet is just showing an incredible versatility in this matchup. Oh, very true. And once again, guys, thank you for hitting our 10K. It's 9.5 right now or whatever, but we hit 10K, so I should be giving four hot keys away at the end of the uh, broadcast. I'll just tweet out who I pick from the random number generator and all shall be good from there. Uh, but without further ado, I think we'll be jumping into our games pretty soon. Our first map will be Cloud Kingdom, Sean. And, I mean, we've already seen a few ZVZs on Cloud Kingdom. Well, just I, I, I like Cloud Kingdom. Well, first, it's just my favorite map in general. And yeah. as in the other matchups, Cloud Kingdom allows for the biggest range of Zerg styles in my eyes. First of all, the counterattacks in the mid game tons of avenues. Yeah. In fact, it's one of the only maps where ha being a four-base Zerg is uncomfortable against a three-base Zerg. Just due to the fact that the three-base Zerg can easily defend himself, and on four bases, there's now, what, four major attack paths and attack mm -hmm. angles to consider. So you've seen Leenok crush people three-base versus four-base here. Uh, Mutalisks work, Fast Infestors work, Fast Roaches work, Early Ling Aggression works. Ten pools, Early Expands, 14 pools, they all work <laughs> on this map. That's very true. That is very true indeed. And I, I like what you were saying about, you know, the third base dynamic actually being far more of a comfortable position and far more of a, I, you would say, advantageous position as opposed to the four base. I mean, sure, if you've actually found the way in which to control the mid game to the point where you're 20, 30 supply up, then taking a fourth is, can be okay. But still, those counter attack paths are pivotal. Anyway, let's get oh, yeah. on with our intros, Mr. Sean. Why don't you take it away? Oh, thank you, Dr. Kilaris. Yeah. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, the Zerg player playing under the ID I am Protoss from Team Incredible Miracle and South Korea. It is Ness T. And spawning up in our top right-hand corner Ooh. as our Red Zerg going for a ten ball, we have Mr. Azubu's Violet. I actually think that was an... Was that an eight pool? I think it may have been... It was either eight or nine. I mean, it looks like Violet... I was taking a page out of Nesty's book and saying, you know what, this is how that feels. <laughs> yeah, and Nesty, Nesty behind this, I almost said Nasty then, um, he's going to end up probably going for a hatchery first. I mean, there's all the potential in the world he can go for that. I mean, 15 pull is something that happens, um, but he is actually moving out for that hatchery first. So Violet can establish himself a very, very nice lead early on here if he's meticulous about his control. Looks like we are seeing the six links pop out. The biggest question in my eyes is, will Violet do the more old school style instant queen, or will he do the more new school style early pool into fast expand? Uh, I much more prefer the more modern style, because even if you flub the attack just a smidge, you're still in excellent shape. 
on that expand timing. And Nesty is going balls out on the mass macro game. He's going for oh gas and then pool on 16. This looks like it's going to be a critical error, but this early gas is going to allow Nesty to snap back if he can stay, excuse me, if he can stay alive. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but uh, the big problem with there is if he can stay alive. This is a lot of aggression that Violet's going to be putting on early on. And with these Zerglings heading on into the natural, actually he's just going to forego the natural completely, head on into his opponent's main base. Once he sees that spawning pool timing, he is going to be so, so happy with himself. Now we see the Zerglings. Walson right on in. How much... <coughs> excuse me. How many... Workers will he pick off? This is interesting, not even going for this expansion hatchery at all. Mm. Just trying to delay, delay, delay as much as possible. And I'm looking at that oh. spawning pool. That is a very, very vulnerable pool angle. There's really no good place for these drones to go. Nesty's trying to cluster to minimize the damage. But, I mean, Violet is just bashing away. And with the number of Zerglings that Violet has here, there's really no way the drones can turn around and attack profitably. And we see drones dropping by the half oh. dozen. Six down right now. Most of them in the deep colors of autumn. And we see that even as the drones step into battle, Violet is happy to engage. Oh. Nine drones down. Uh, and he gets a cheeky little pick off at the very end there on that last drone. So Violet right now is grabbing himself a fantastic, fantastic position in this game. Unit carrying station is 16 drones to six. Violet is, wow. I, I like the idea that Nesty expands and Violet says, hey, nice fast hatch, enjoy the, enjoy the six drones, and just pulls back. Mm -hmm. Nothing Nesty can really do to step back in. It's going to be a swift game. With a, an economy like this, Nesty literally has one attack timing, and then there's nothing else he can do. Not a, yeah. not a specific attack timing, but for whatever attack you decide to do as Nesty, you really get one shot, and then you're dead. Yeah. That's that's so true. It's it's hard here because you know you got six drones. Great, you've got all the lava in the world, but not really the ability to be able to spend all of that lava it, just with six drones worth of income. So he's trying to catch up right now. Twenty-one drones to the fourteen here. Both players are just droning up. So Nesty's gonna get himself a little bit of an economy, but Violet's always gonna be ahead quite considerably with five drones now on the way to two. So, in the meantime, spotting overlords in every reasonable position. Nesty's trying to just drone himself up. Violet is going for the spawning pool speed upgrade. And knowing Violet, he's unlikely to say, all right, I have the drone lead. Let me go for layer. Let me try to get the lead in that regard. He's likely just going to try to bust right now with the Baneling Nest. And of course, as a standard in Zerg versus Zerg, even if the Baneling bust fails, you always have a standard follow-up you can execute. Hmm. It's and you know with Violet positioning his Baneling Nest here, he also gives himself such good defensive positions. He can quite easily position his queen in between the Baneling Nest and the hatchery to negate a little bit of that surface area that the Lings would have to put on some pressure. But look at all the Zerglings he has on the way. Nest he's so busy about droning. Will he be able to react to this kind of pressure? Well, I think no. <laughs> That's Quite honestly, Kilaris, this is okay. this is one of these situations where, you know, Nesty, as we saw in his series against Delphi, a real master of hanging in there and staying alive, refuses to say, I'm going to go all in and try to get a lucky attack angle. But there's just not that much micro that you can effectively execute with just spine crawlers and queens and no banelings against this huge invasion we're seeing out of Violet. And look at Violet's bank it's through the roof can easily take a third hatch right here and extend his economic lead. And here he is swinging right on in. The Spine Crawler is one of the first targets. And there the Banelings roll in. See you later, Spine Crawler. Who even needs to take out the Lings when you have that amount of units? Violet storms the front. One queen goes down. Two queens go down. And it's looking very hairy. GG. Wow. Violet, I mean, this is why he's... So, so scary in ZVZ, right? If if he sees the opportunity to grab that uh, advantage and run with it to the point where he can just finish the game there mm -hmm. and then, he will snap his fingers and finish it there and then. It's it's a nice talent to have. Nice talent to have. <laughs> Useful skill toy have. Yes. And, you know, I...
I'll even reference the previous series that if any didn't catch uh, was Nesty versus Delphi. And in two of the games, Nesty did go for the fast pool play. And what happened when Nesty went for that early pool and saw the early hatch? He targeted the hatch and tried to take that down. And yeah. Delphi didn't really lose that many drones. But amazingly, we see Violet just doing an, an entirely different answer with his Zergling storming right on in to the main base to take out as many drones as humanly possible. And then just let him have the expansion, and it was an even more convincing win. Yeah, it was, it was impressive decision-making there from Violet as he powers on through game number one. We are going to go to a short commercial break here, guys, and then when we're back, we'll have game number two between Azubu's Violet and LGIM Nest Team.